It's a warm welcome to GRTS News at 2200 hours. We are broadcasting live for viewers in the Gambia and around the world. In the headlines, His Excellency President Adam Abaro lays the foundation stone for the $100 million Radisson Blue Hotel in Bijilo, initiating an infrastructural landmark ahead of the OIFC conference. The Integral University of Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh, India, bestows a key and doctoral degree of philosophy in human letters to President Adam Abaro. In sports, the battle for the top seat in Gambian football heats up as two presidential aspirants face off for the upcoming GFF elections scheduled for August 27th. Away from home, the head of the World Health Organization declares the fast spreading monkeypox outbreak a global health emergency with cases detected in more than 70 countries, as were well, preparations to resume grain exports as underway in Ukraine after a Russian missile strike on the post city of Odessa. Well, details of this and much more coming ahead in this edition of the news. I am Isa Dukete and thanks for joining us. Well, it's great to have you here with us. We begin with the presidency. His Excellency President Adam Abaro laid the foundation stone for the $100 million Radisson Blue Hotel on Saturday in Bijilo, initiating a major infrastructural landmark ahead of the OIC conference. The Radisson Blue Hotel comes with more than 400 suits and 60 royal and presidential suits set to complement the country's tourism infrastructure and increase job opportunities in the sector. We have details in this report by Ibrahim Ajalo. <laughs> President Barrow arrived to a rousing welcome at the project site to preside over a highly anticipated event, the laying of the foundation stone of the Radisson Blue Five Star Hotel. It is one of the major infrastructural projects required for the hosting of the OIC summit in Banjul. The CEO of the OIC Secretariat, Yanko Badiba, outlined the work of the Secretariat and partners in executing the OIC projects, including the Radisson Blue Hotel. He said the contract was awarded on satisfactory grounds. This five-star project is unique as it is a public-private partnership and it is the single biggest investment in the history of hospitality industry in the Gambia. Mr. President, please allow me to inform our audience that today's milestone is the outcome of three long years of a thorough and transparent due process. At the close of the tender, on the 8th of May, 2020, only one company, Imol Ansal, submitted the full compilation of documents required. Abdullah Cham, the chairman of the contracted company, Imol Ansal, expressed delight for investing in the Gambia, with a view of promoting South-South cooperation for development in Africa. It is blessing that I am in the Gambia today to take part in laying the foundation stone of a branded five-star hotel. Back in April 2021, I came to the Gambia to sign a concession agreement with your government to invest here in the Gambia. I would like to thank your government for the facility they did to sign this agreement. Your Excellency, Mr. President, I want to repeat for the record that this investment is based this investment is based on the spirit of creating and promoting inter-African cooperation and especially cooperation between Senegal and the Gambia. It is my strong belief that we Africans should begin to promote trade and investment among ourselves instead of always depending on French source of financing. The Minister of Tourism and Culture, Hamad N. K. Ba, said the project would boost the Gambia's tourism sector by providing products and services of international standards. This country lacks an international brand. Today, we don't have one single international brand in the Gambia. The Accord Group left the Gambia a couple of years ago, Saratoga left the Gambia a couple of years ago, and bringing this uh, Radisson Group here will certainly make a difference. You know, in my discussion yesterday, we are trying to see how best we can also encourage other two international brands to come to the Gambia because it matters a lot to the promotion and development of our tourism sector. We will give you all the support, Mr. Chairman. The Gambian 
Ministries will support you at every level. We know the importance of this project. We know the importance of tourism in our economy. We know the importance of tourism in our social life. And we believe your project will add value to the country and to the Gambian life. We'll support you. The President, His Excellency Adam Abaru, took to the podium in a rather ambitious mood describing the Radisson Bull Hotel as a major infrastructural project undertaken by his government as part of a transformative agenda. With a portfolio of 100 million US dollars, this proposed five-star hotel project is the single biggest investment in the tourism sector in the country since independence in 1965. More significant compared to other OIC summit infrastructure projects, it is the single biggest investment portfolio ever of its kind on Gambian soil. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is happening that within three years, my government has successfully mobilized more than 300 million. U.S. dollars. In our efforts to host the world's biggest organization of the Muslim Ummah. Heartily too, we are hosting the summit in accordance with our trademark hospitality as the smiling cause of Africa. President Barrow said the OIC projects are on course, despite challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, among others. Although the COVID-19 pandemic affected we have noted that the implementation stage of all the OIC summit projects is in progress. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the five-star hotel that will be constructed on this site will mark the reddish blue brand in the sub-region. This incorporates its facilities, architecture, services, and management. It will house 400 high-end garden and sea view guest rooms, as well as VIP suits. It will have royal villas, residential apartments, meeting rooms, and other event venues. The president later proceeded to the symbolic laying of the foundation stone of the Radisson Bulu Hotel in the Gambia. The project, according to the contractor, will be completed in 15 months. Perico OIC Gambia Punga Jama Jama Wolpe Kiriwaka Sila Kudo Jama Jama Kado OIC Ibrahim Ajal GRTS News now, the laying of the foundation stone of the Radisson Blue Hotel has been hailed as a significant milestone as Gamba edges closer to the hosting of the OIC summit. Here is more on the development's projected impact and value to the Gamba's tourism industry. A clear manifestation of development-oriented leadership takes shape as focus on the much-awaited OIC conference remains high. The $100 million five-star hotel adds up to the list of already existing hotels but this development landmark comes with an international brand set to add value to Gambian tourism. It's good for the country, it's good for the project as far as the OIC is concerned because we'll be having some dignitaries coming to the country, the presidents of OIC countries. So we welcome the idea and then we are grateful that the, the person that is taking care of the, the project is a Gambian. It is a project applauded by many. The coming of Radisson Blue Banjul under Imogam is a long-awaited vision boosting ongoing infrastructural developments in the country. This is a, a milestone development for the overall infrastructural development of the Gambia, but particularly the tourism sector. We've all had the Minister of Tourism talking about the international brand, the absence of international brand in the Gambia. Having such a brand in the Gambia will not only attract tourists, by high-spending tourists. The project was initially positioned to last for 18 months, but a confident indication by the contractor could see works completed in 15 months, with building works expected to run 24 hours round the clock. This 17-hectare piece of land would be quite adequate to host a five-star hotel of the magnitude planned. Where we are standing now is a 17-hectare land, and um, it's uh, reserved for this particular hotel. And as, the, as you heard from the president's speech, we are going to have 400 um, super uh, rooms 
and we are going to have 50 presidential uh, suits and also 10 royal suits. So it's going to ad adequately cater for the main guests and at the same time it will have other facilities. So I want to make this uh, very clear. This is a business investment. People shouldn't see it as something that is just purely for the OIC and after the OIC that's it. No. It is an investment between the concessionaire and the government and uh, we really expect return on investment. All eyes will soon be on the small West African nation which is moving to galvanize tourism through improved infrastructural development. It signifies what the government and their sense of direction towards the, um, the OIC summit. It is uh, it is going to add a lot into our, our, our tourism sector. The employment is going to generate for the youths of this Gambia is also immense. And I think it's even going to change the flora and fauna. It's going to give it a new look. And this nation Gambia will be very much enhanced uh, with the incoming of this five-star hotel. Radisson Blue is a top global brand, and we believe that's going to add value to what we have already existing in our tourism sector. Adding to the already existing list of names branding the smiling course, Radisson Blue brings a unique touch of tourism with destination Gambia on course to revitalize its markets. You might have all the finest roads, you might have the best conference center, but they need to be comfortable. You need to put them in, in, in a comfortable place befitting their status. And uh, we pride ourselves in really taking care of guests, and we call ourselves the Smiling Post. So uh, as far as the OIC is concerned, this five-star is a unique addition, and it's something that uh, without it, I wouldn't say the summit would, be, would not be held, but it's an important and critical component. As Gambians hail recent developments under the leadership of President Barrow, the country is on course to improve growth, with road building programs already in construction, with the newly commissioned Radisson Blue Hotel, putting the Gambia on a pedestal to host the most anticipated international conference. Radisson Blue is one of the top tier hotels in the world. An international brand of such a magnitude will be the centerpiece of the OIFC conference given the fact that Gambia remains one of the exotic tourism destinations in the world, this will add value not only in terms of tourism development, but enhancing economic development in the Smiling Coast. For GRTS News, this is Aisa Tukaita. Moving on, the Gambian Vice President, His Excellency Badara Ali Ujuf, received the key to Lucknow University as well as a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Human Letters, Honours Causa, on behalf of His Excellency President Adam Abaro on Friday. During a convocation ceremony at the residence of the Gambian Ambassador in New Delhi, the founder and Chancellor of Integral University, Professor S.W. Akta, with University Prof Professor and Chancellor Dr. Said Nadim Akta and Vice Chancellor Professor Javid Musarat, presented the university key to vo Vice President Juf and announced the conferring of the PhD in Human Letters to the Gambian Head of State. The university will formally confer the doctorate degree on President Barrow when he visits India in due course. During the ceremony, the founder and chancellor of Integral University, Professor S. W. Akta, said both the key and honorary doctoral degree were testimony to President Adam Abaro's visionary and inspiring leadership that has brought so much hope and inspiration to Gambians at a short time. On a President Barrow, the Gambian people have experienced unprecedented freedom and a new atmosphere of democracy, respect for the rule of law, and basic human rights. The citation also dwelt on Mr. Barrow's reform policies, his commitment to economic development, free market economy, and impressive educational and social development policies for the advancement of the Gambian people. Accepting the university key and honorary doctoral degree on behalf of the Gambian leader, President, Vice President Badara Juf thanked the leadership, management and academic staff of Integral University and assured them that the credentials will serve as a great motivation for Mr. Barrow as he charts new ways for the Gambia. VP Juf told Integral University that they have a very significant role to play in the technological and educational advancement of the Gambia and would love to have their presence felt across the country. The ceremony hosted by the Gambian High Commissioner to India, His Excellency Mustafa Jawara, was witnessed by the Vice Presidential Delegation to the 17th edition of the India-Africa Conclave, as well as senior officials and academics from Integral University events. 
Na former Lower River Region Governor and Minister of Environment Rohi John Manjang has handed over regional tax and projects to new Governor Sidi Laminba in Mansa Konko. The former governor, who also has who was immensely hailed for her dedication to duty, used the occasion to urge regional officials in the Lower River Region to continue working together. Usman Balde. The former governor of Lower River Region has called on the people and public servants in the region to support her successor for the development of the region and the country at large. Rohi John Manchang, who is currently the Minister of Environment, made the remarks at the official handing over ceremony of the post of a governor, Mr. Sidi Lamin Pa, as she bid farewell to the region. Sidi Lamin, welcome. You don't want us to welcome you home. But somebody who is also an indigenous is going to welcome you home. Welcome home. Thank you. Sidi Lamin is somebody who has been into the spirit of uniting the people of this country. He has been behind His Excellency Adam Abaro, supporting his agenda, supporting the agenda of this country. And that is what has earned him the trust, to be entrusted to serve a whole region. Yes, he was serving the country. But now he has been given a, a direct assignment to serve a whole region, and that is his own region. Then I have no doubt that he will do much more than I did. And I have no doubt that if you give him all the support that he deserved, you'll achieve more together. And I am optimistic that this technical advisory committee that I have worked with, I have experience to, to work with, they are more than ready to work. The newly appointed governor of LRR, Mr. Sidi Lamin Ba, thanked his predecessor for strengthening peace and stability, as well as security and social cohesion in the region, which he said will still be part of his priorities. So my first task is to make sure the people of LRR are united and are ready to work in the same vision as His Excellency the President want to take this country. Um, I am also a young person, and it is of interest to me to see that young people in this region also unite so that we can see how best we can work together and harness their skills to promote peace, growth, and development in LRR. Notwithstanding, um, my predecessor, um, the new Minister of Environment, Rohi John Manja, has left a legacy for me to improve upon, and that is a challenge. You know, she has been highly commended here, and I want to recommend that. But I'm taking up from where she stopped, and we are moving further. I'm happy that we have a good technical advisory committee in place that will be working with me hand in glove to look at LRR squarely, and then we move forward. But I'm also more than willing to caution that it will not be business as usual. We will definitely look at everything in terms of the regional administration, because as regional administrators, we are here to represent the government of the day and to run the day-to-day -day affairs of the region. So we will look at everything squarely and we make sure we put things in the right order. We make sure that LRR is or will become an envy for all other regions in the Gambia. The Deputy Governor of LRR, Keba Dabo, thanked the former governor for what he described as excellent leadership and assault the new governor of his continued support and dedication to service delivery. Today is a day where which we are saying we are sad, but we are also happy because we are parting with a governor that has, you know, developed this region tremendously. And uh, also the coming of the new governor also, you know, we assured him of our support, including the tag and staff of the governor's office. Alpha Khan, a senior TAC member, assures Governor Pa of the TAC member's support to his office for the development of the region. We want to support you to make sure that what he left behind is sustained and even if you have to add more onto it to make sure that LRR becomes the envy of other regions. So I also welcome you on behalf of the Technical Advisory Committee. For my colleagues, the Technical Advisory Committee members, uh, I want to reiterate that it is our responsibility as a team because we are the technical arm of the region, we are the technocrats of the region, we are the advisors of the governor in this region. 
So, in as much as uh, Ma is leaving, but then she has also made an appeal that we work tirelessly with the incoming governor. Let us maintain the momentum and make sure that what is expected of a professional technical advisory committee is delivered. Minister John Majang received praises and prayers from the people of Elara for her excellent leadership as well as the success registered in the area of peace, stability, security and infrastructure among other areas of national development. Usman Balde, GRTS News. While well, moving on to efforts aimed at promoting professionalism in the media, the Gamba Press Union recently organized a four-day hazardous environmental awareness training for 20 journalists. As Farmer Abaji reports, the training in Pakalinding Lower River Region seeks to widen expertise in the coverage of life-threatening events. As part of their mandate to ensure professionalism in the media industry, the Gambia Press Union continues to devise efforts in building the capacity of Gambian journalists. This hazardous environment awareness training is the first of its kind in the country, orienting close to 20 journalists drawn across different mediums for a week-long training. If situation changes while you are reporting on an event, um, you have to look after yourself first before you are able to tell this story. Um, that's why, as part of our safety trainings, we also think that we need to do a hazardous environment awareness training, um, which will be more intensive, you know, uh, with a lot of activities, simulation activities, that which journalists could use um, in the future if they found themselves in real life situations. They have learned what to do in the situation before they experience the danger, before they experience the fear. How can they prepare themselves? How can they get aware about what is happening so they can mitigate the dangers? If still they experience a danger, what can they do in the dangerous situation to mitigate the threats and to mitigate that the danger will not evolve too drastically? So it's a lot about capabilities to understand the difficult, hostile, hazardous situation, to understand what you can do, and for how you can escape from this situation. The training was conducted by different resource persons, including professional international journalist Las Mola and psychology expert Fatou Kantara, alongside force leaders and security officers. Before the training was a combination of theory and practical, with journalists taking lectures in the hall before hitting the ground for simulation exercises. At first hand, they were shown different first aid support guides sure they can they offer to colleagues when they get injured in the field. Very, very After two days of theory, the next was a field trip. This group of journalists are now set to go on a field trip to see if they will be able to put into practice, I mean, what they've been learning about risk assessment, risk mitigation, safety, force aid, and so on. They're going to go into an assumed dangerous, I mean, environment, hostile environment, where arm attack, I mean, is highly likely, where they are set to face hostile security, I mean, angry mobs possibly. They're going to go into a hostile environment, I mean, landmine areas. The mission here is just knowing what to do if you are in a situation like that in real life. In different vehicles, media participants headed into the bulls, an assumed conflicted zone in the outskirts of Pakalinding, for the simulation exercise. The journalists will soon have their first encounter with people playing the role of a hostile security at a checkpoint with toy guns, requesting all needed credentials before members of the press can be allowed to advance further. There's always a debriefing by the trainees before the team is allowed to proceed to the next stop, where others playing the role of bandits were stationed. At every stop, there is a simulation exercise, exposing journalists to situations they are likely to face covering events in a hostile environment. There was nothing serious about this whole exercise. It's just a demonstration of, I mean, what these journalists should expect should in case they cover dangerous countries, hostile areas, hostile environment. These are some of the things they're going to find themselves in, in real life situation. They have experienced 
what it was to feel attacked, to be brutalized, to be caught, to get out of a car which is ambushed. And they are now able to recall this experience if they ever get in a real situation. They are able to connect connect this experience with a number of actions and we are trying to get the actions down to three as in a standard operational procedure. What we've seen here um, in the last uh, four days as part of the exercises um, where we face some armed robberies and simulation exercise where we face some kidnapping, people have been blindfolded, handcuffed, detained, you know, forced to lie down on the ground. You know, people are injured and people try to uh, administer force aid and those kind of things. How journalists are looking out for their colleagues. I think these are really things that were impressive um, because if we are able to apply these skills um, when real life situations occur, um, that would definitely be a great impact on our job. A broader debriefing aimed at widening the understanding of reporters on every bit of the training was conducted as soon as participants returned from the field. Important lectures were delivered on psychology by expert Fatou Kantara, who taught reporters how to recover from trauma and covering stressful events. This is what one of the trainees said about the HIT training. I've learned a lot of new things from the training with regards to how I can survive in tough situations if I happen to find myself in hostile environments like um, uh, in separated areas. This I think would go a long way in uh, helping me because um, I did not say I don't know much of these things but it, it, it has really impacted, it has added a lot to my experience. A training in safety, force aid, security and psychology is an important milestone for these journalists whose coverage of events in a hazardous environment might not look so strange anymore. Farmer Abad, GRTS News. Well, quite an impressive one there. And now we look at efforts towards the propagation of Islam. Mahat's Islamic Institute in Birkham on Sunday held its 30th graduation ceremony at a jam-packed mosque as flash winds continue to hit the metropolis in the West Coast region. Ibrahim Abba attended the event and filed in this report. Regarded as the fastest growing religion in the world and its teaching remains crucial towards saving the lives of billions of Muslims around the world. This graduation ceremony at Mahat Islamic Institute, one of the top Islam education colleges, unveils a fresh cohort of graduates on course to deliver the message of Islam among Gambia's younger generation. In a keynote address full of wisdom and guidance for new graduates, the occasion's guest speaker, who is also an ex-student of Mahat, Dr. Seth Jite, highlighted the importance of education, noting that the purpose of seeking knowledge is to improve the life of the individual. Knowledge seekers who knows the truth among the people should be our hope. Who are you going to put your hopes on are the people who are our light and that is our prophet. Peace be upon him. School principal Abdul Latif Drame said the establishment of the school was inspired by the desire to spread knowledge to those who need it. This school was established by Al Haji Banding Drame to help propagate Islam on the truthful path that is going to benefit its students. Commenting on the ideals of the school's late founder, Sheikh Ahmed Banding Drame of Blessed Memory, Khalid Ahmad Drame and Ibrahim Drame, respectively outlined the school's contribution to human development and training since its inception in 1978. And Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh Ahmed Bandin Drame, may Allah have mercy on his soul, and uh, his propagation in Islam is very simple and straightforward. You know, it's the modernity, you know, and uh, it's what we have. No, Islam, that's what we have. We should keep our Islam and we understand Islam. You know, Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion of tolerance. Islam is a religion of 
love among ourselves. We love each other. You know, like the hadith of Prophet Muhammad You know, what you love for yourself, uh, you love for your own brother and sisters. You know, and that's what we are doing in this, you know, institute. This school is uh, unique in this country. It was established by a renowned Islamic scholar, Sheikh Ahmed Banindra Milit, uh, who died two years ago, exactly two years now. I think he has started this school from a grassroots level, you know, started with only two classes initially. This was in back in 1978, when some of us were also very young. And through the, uh, the time, you know, you can see it has made a lot of impact in the lives of thousands of Gambians. You know, no, in fact, Gambians are non-Gambians. I can tell you students of this school, some of them came from Casamas, from Guinea Conakry, from Sierra Leone, you know, Senegal. So Mali, even Malians are also here. So it has actually trained so many students and the students of this school can now be found in so many different uh, sectors. You have some of the students of this school who are now in the banking sector, in the construction uh, area, lecturer, lecturers, some of them are caddies. So you find the students of this school everywhere in this country and even outside the, uh, the country. The institution continues to embrace development with its expansion into separate shifts covering English and Arabic, broadening a vital curriculum and reviving the ideals of a man touted as Gambia's Emir of Islamic Education. Ibrahim Abba, GRTS News. Now, Taku Lege Skills Training Center on Sunday commemorates two decades of existence, providing vocational and skills education for young people in the country. The event was celebrated through a march pass led by Gambia Police Band with both current and former students of the school. Usman Mane has the details. Skills Training Center is one of the seven facilities established across the country since 2002 by the Social Development Fund, SDF. Celebrating 20 years of existence in skills development for the hospitality industry, so current and former students participate in a march pass that was cut short due to rains along the Bundun Serakunda motorway led by the Gambia Police Band. Committed to provide relevant and high quality education for young people, in particular women, Takulige continues to enhance employment and long life learning, according to the school principal, Sheikh Omar Jassi. It will prepare students to be self-independent. We prepare students for them to know the responsibility that they had in serving their community. And that is exactly the motto of this very institution. Our entire objective is to serve Gambians. The main objective is not to make money, it's to maximize welfare. We, our objective is always to prepare the younger generation for them to take ownership of this country and to serve their community. The institute, accredited by the National Quality Assurance Authority, NACA, has graduated about 2,348 students in the hospitality management. It remains the only skill center constructed by the SDF, as explained by the proprietors of the school, Jata Njai. SDF, the federal politician dilated on the importance of education and skills development, noting that women are the key drivers of households. Despite decades of success, the school is also facing capacity and financial challenges. According to Mrs. Njai, the center has been seriously impacted by COVID pandemic. She called for support citing students who are in need of tuition assistance and still facing challenges in their learning. The National Assembly member for Bundung, Suleiman Jame, who doubles as the board chairman of the school, has been a key pillar towards the success of the center, Madam Jai explained. But Chairman Jame, in an interview, said the cordial relationship with partners is paying dividend for both the school and students, 
through internship programs. Today we can happily report that uh, almost 75% uh, of our students are employed because the school, you know, created a good working relationship with industrial like hotels in the industry where uh, we normally send, you know, our students for, go, for them to go on internship. So when they have their internship, as we know, Kakulige is a school where we normally teach our students with morals and best practices. So most of the time, students are absorbed in those various hotels. The March Pass is one of the events marking two decades of existence in education. Usman Mane, the RTS. Well, we head on straight to sports where the two presidential aspirants in the upcoming elections of the Gamba Football Federation have launched their manifestos and unveiled their respective teams. Lamin Kababajo and Sadibu Kamaso are vying for the top office in Gambian football with elections slated for August 27th and already the race is hitting up. GRTS MS Jalo tells us more. The battle line is drawn. The race for the Gambia Football Federation presidency is on. Two candidates have thrown their heart in the race, pending the nomination process. Incumbent Lamin Kababaju is seeking re-election for a third term, but standing in his way is Sadibu Kamaso, who until recently was an executive member in the Kababaju-led executive. The election date is set for August 27th, when football stakeholders with voting rights will choose between Kababaju and Kamaso to occupy the highest office in Gambian football. The election is nicely shaping up into an exciting race with football stakeholders divided between the two candidates. Both candidates have launched their manifestos in a bid to convince the voters. The incumbent is campaigning on a slogan of continuity, stability, and progress. Kaba, who has been at the helm of Gambian football for the past eight years, believes his team has brought remarkable development, including qualifying the Gambia to its first Africa Cup of Nations. Another reason he says makes him the right candidate for a third term. When coming back to you again, requesting for a mandate to renew the term, we felt it's incumbent upon us to take stock of what has happened in the past four years. Together with our partners, the government in particular, today the Gambia is a respectable football nation worldwide. We have seen how the Scorpions qualified for its maiden Afghan, where it eventually finished sixth in Cameroon at the beginning of this year. Our other categories of national teams in both men and women have registered remarkable strides in the past four years. Absolute decentralization of football has been achieved in the Gambia under my leadership with every region now represented in the National League. But one area the Kababajo administration had seemingly failed is its infrastructural development project. And this will be a key and contentious issue in the election. Infrastructure is one of the key factors impeding the rapid development of the game in the country and on the continent in its entirety. This one area we have our biggest challenges during the last four years. And we never shy away from talking about it. The executive committee committed itself to use some of FIFA Ford development support uh, funds to gradually improve the existing football pitches used for national leagues due to administrative delay, slow in accessing of the funds from the FIFA and challenges with consultants and contractors. Significant delays happen impacted negative on these projects. We have a direct impact on grassroots football and also national football calendars. Businessman Sadibu Kamaso, who is the Secretary General of Hawks Football Club, had earlier launched his manifesto called the Starting Eleven. He is campaigning under the slogan, Restore Confidence to Gambian Football. The Team Restore Confidence group is made of a people of football enthusiasts with a clear and principled agenda to restore the substantial erosion of confidence that we face in our football. Our objective is to come and change the mindset of Gambian football with key focus on organizational effectiveness, accountability, and transparency. And we have four key areas that we want to focus on. At the unveiling of his team, Restore Confidence, Kamaso maintains that time has come for change to institute a more vibrant executive body 
the Rwandan Gambian football. The Restore Confidence team has the objective to focus on four key areas, and one of them is the rebranding and the remodeling of the GFF institution. Because wherever you go and call yourself an executive of the GFF, they look at you as an individual who's corrupt or an individual who's involved in issues that do not conform with the ethics of football. We want to read the GFF of that, and we will do that now. Team Restore Confidence charges the Kaba executive of maladministration and mismanagement, something the Team Kaba rubbishes as unfounded, whilst critics of Sadibu are asking where he was during that period. Both Kaba Bajo and Sadibu unveiled their teams, with Mr. Bajo retaining Bakari K. Jame and Ibu Fai as his first and second vice presidents, and Senebu Cham as third vice president. His team also included Numukunda Kanyi and Lieutenant Colonel Musa Jame, amongst others. Kamoso, on the other hand, has picked Ato Olu Ascroft as his running mate for the first vice president. Chorom Benga and Mohamed Sisi as second and third vice presidents, respectively. Team Rastor Confidence also include Ami Jenjai and former Gambian international footballer Ibu Silla. Both candidates are now expected to file their nomination with the GFF electoral body to pave the way for their participation in the August 27th election, subject to fulfilling the eligibility criteria. But already the race for the highest office at the Gambia's football house is intensely heating up. Momodes Jala, Jiatra Sports. Well, looking forward to what will be an interesting phase of COM 27th August. While well, you're watching GRTS Live, and this is GRTS News with me, I said to cater. I look at our main points once again. His Excellency President Adam Abaro laid the foundation stone for the $100 million five star Radisson Blue Hotel in Bijilo, initiating a major infrastructural landmark ahead of the OIC conference. The integral University of Luke now in Uttar Pradesh, India, has bestowed a key and doctoral degree of philosophy in human letters to President Adam Abaro. In sports, the battle for the top seat in Gambian football is nearing climax as two presidential aspirants face off for the upcoming GFF elections scheduled for August 27th. Away from home, the World Health Organization has declared the fast spreading monkeypox outbreak a global health emergency with cases detected in more than 70 countries. Elsewhere, preparations are underway to resume grain exports in Ukraine after a Russia's missile strike on the post city of Odessa. While that was all we had time for in today's edition of GRTS News, for me and the entire news team, we want to thank you for the pleasure of your company. Continue watching GRTS.